What do you do if you are told you're being kicked out of the hospital even though you still need medical care and you have nowhere else to go? We brought you the story of a 73-year-old man yesterday who was hospitalized for two months and is waiting for a long-term care bed. Security was sent to his room and he was literally kicked out of Scarborough's Rouge Valley Hospital in a wheelchair. There are many things that are wrong with this scenario and it's been going on for years despite a former Minister of Health ordering it to stop. He says, well, I have no other place to go. What am I to do? I, 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 I don't know what else to do. So they said that's not their business. They don't, uh, what do they call them? They don't uh, keep people in the hospital. And it would cost me something like 17 or 1800 dollars a day. That's what it would cost to stay in the hospital. Except one lawyer who specializes in elder law says hospitals aren't allowed to threaten patients to charge them 1800 bucks a day. They can't charge him this amount of money, although it gets threatened across this province. We see it on a routine basis. What they can charge is the amount of a co-payment of a long-term care facility, which is about $60, $61 a day. All these people. Now, this very issue came to a head back in 2011 when Deb Matthews was the health minister for the Liberal government. She ordered hospitals across the province to end the practice of threatening to charge elderly patients up to $1,800 a day to bully them into leaving while they were waiting for long-term care. There are currently 30,000 people on the wait list, and it can take up to five years to get a placement. Now, the issue lies with the current health minister, Christine Elliott. And we asked for an interview with the current health minister, but have not yet heard back from her office today. We also emailed questions to her spokesperson, asking if the minister condones this practice of threatening patients with large hospital bills. And if not, will she instruct hospitals to cease it? We have not yet received a response. Elliot was the province's first patient ombudsman and left the position last year when she ran for the PC leadership. Last year, the office released a report which found the number one cluster of complaints centered around inappropriate discharge planning. Now, hospitals are in a bind. The lack of long-term care creates a backlog in the system and is contributing to hallway medicine, which Doug Ford promised to end while he was on the campaign trail. And we have been investigating the conditions of group homes, which many people who can't get into long care end up in, and they are illegal in parts of Toronto. We've spoken to a woman whose father died in a home with substandard conditions. We've also grilled hospitals, ministers, and experts about why people are ending up in these places. You can catch up on all our coverage at citynews.ca slash group homes.